right, well, good morning. Welcome to uh, New Life, New Life uh, off campus, I guess. Uh, we're glad that you guys are here this morning. We're going to open up with one song, and uh, towards the end, we'll have you guys join in, but uh, listen and hope this is a blessing to you guys.
good is he not? I don't know about you, but when we sing that first song, Oh, Praise the Name, and now we've sung that, I feel like we're just getting started, right? I think we need to sing, Oh, Praise the Name again. Can we do that from the top? Let's sing, Oh, Praise the Name. Here's the deal, right? We are gathered together as a church family. Can you say amen? Amen. Listen, Brother Dick had quadruple bypass surgery. He went in for triple. They said, let's throw another one in there. Had quadruple bypass surgery. Talked to me on the phone yesterday. He said, Jonathan, yesterday, the day before, he said, I did not think I was going to make it. He said, but God had other plans. And I woke up today, and I feel 100 times better. Listen to me. We have a God that is good. And we have a God that is in the healing business, a God that does incredible work. I don't know about you, but I am in just the mood to praise God this morning. And I think we can sing again. Let's sing that song. I'll praise the name. And we'll do some announcements and move on with our service. But praise him with intention this morning. Lift up your voice. We serve a good God. Let's praise him.
we go. We've got a hundred people in this room. And we just lifted our voices singing praises to God. Now think about this. Think about millions gathered around this throne. Looking to the Lamb that took away the sin of the world. People from every kindred, every tribe, every tongue. Generation after generation of people place faith in Christ. Now imagine with me, if you would, singing that together. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. And that's a song we'll get to sing eternally. Oh, what a joy that is. What a joy this morning. Thank you so much for your great worship there. You can be seated. Let me give you a couple of announcements here, and then we'll move on. I am thankful for all the prayers this week for my family. Uh, those of you who heard uh, my, my stepbrother passed away. Uh, 30 years old, and he passed away this week in California. And uh, those of you who have reached out, just been a blessing to our family. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, we we definitely feel those prayers, and we're very, very thankful for that. Um, those of you who have asked about Brother Dick, doing much better, and uh, we are very thankful for him. Uh, we are very, very grateful for the uh, the word that we've gotten from the doctors, and uh, it has just been a tremendous encouragement. Uh, do pray for him. He's still in a difficult space, and uh, obviously with everything with the, uh, the virus, Miss Sue hasn't been able to be there uh, as much as she'd like. She had to get an exemption to go, and so uh, continue to pray for uh, Brother Dick, and I know that would be a great blessing. Uh, Keegan, where you at, Keegan? Keegan? is right back there. Keegan has surgery tomorrow, and uh, so let's lift her up in prayer. Uh, matter of fact, in just a moment, we're going to pray for her. What time is her surgery tomorrow? Uh, ten, 9 o'clock. I can't read. I'm sorry. She lifted up nine fingers. I said 10 o'clock? Okay. Uh, 9 o'clock, and uh, so let's pray for that. And then also this morning, uh, Liz Babnick's dad, uh, they got a call that he was rushed to the hospital, and uh, he had uh, passed out and was not responding uh, there this morning, uh, diabetes, they believe, is probably the cause of that. Uh, but we haven't gotten any word, any update there. But if we could pray for them this morning as well. Uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of requests uh, that we want to take the Lord in prayer. And so let's do that, and then we'll jump through our announcements, give you some updates there, and then uh, we'll move on. We'll sing one more song, and then uh, we'll jump into the worship, or jump into the message this morning. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you so much that you are a powerful God. God, our desire is that our lives, our, our um, very being would bring you glory. And so we seek that and we understand that in every situation your will is different. We pray ultimately that your will be done in every situation. But we lift up Brother Dick this morning and uh, we miss him. We love him. We're so thankful for he and Miss Sue. And Father, I pray this morning that you'd touch him and that you'd encourage his heart. We thank you for the great blessing, the way he, that he has stewarded his life thus far. And we pray if it be your will that you give him many more years to serve you. And we ask that you would do that. We pray that you be with Liz's dad this morning. Father, the, everything uh, going on there, the uncertainty there, uh, we pray that you just give doctors and nurses wisdom. We pray that they uh, know exactly how to uh, treat him and that you uh, help him to recover well. Uh, we think of Keegan and her surgery tomorrow. I pray that you would just uh, steal her nerves and uh, calm her heart. We thank you so much for the blessing that she is to our church and just the joy that she is to be around. And Father, I pray that you bless her. Uh, watch out for her protect her those that have uh, recently uh, moved or gone back to where they've been uh, snowbirding from and things like that I pray that you bless them and protect them this morning we thank you for every person that's a part of this church family and so many different requests and needs represented here we pray that your will be done in each one that you be glorified through everything that's done and we thank you we praise you in Jesus name we pray amen all right, let me give you a couple things here real quick. Number one, uh, if you don't follow New Life on social media and you have social media, please do that. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you can do that. Uh, right now, I believe our service is live on faith, uh, Facebook. I almost said Facebook. Facebook. Uh, if you want to jump on there and share the service, invite your friends to watch with, that would be a great time. Uh, I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into the sermon this morning. The title of the sermon is Jesus, period. 
And uh, we're just going to talk about Jesus and make much of him. And that's probably a message the world needs to hear, right? And so I would encourage you to do that. Uh, Also, just a couple more things. The I Love My Church project. Uh, Man, it's been really encouraging. This week, uh, something like a $7,000 donation came in uh, toward that. Can we get an amen right there? God is good. Uh, That puts us at about $21,000 on the project. And so uh, $12,000 more uh, to be able to furnish the building and things are going great. I know you're antsy to get back in that building, and trust me, I am antsy to get back in the building as well, and we are close, and so continue to pray toward that end, and uh, I cannot wait to be able to get in and be able to worship and serve the Lord. Uh, some great things happening right now, and I'm just excited for you to be able to see it uh, as well. Uh, also, we have our Zoom fellowship. If you've not yet tuned in on Zoom, we don't have a ton of these left. Make the time on Thursday night to jump in and fellowship. Uh, it is just a great time to be able to share life with one another and pray for one another and encourage one another. And uh, you can do so from the comfort of your living room or wherever you're at. But I want to encourage you to be part of that Zoom fellowship. Also on Wednesday nights, we have our kids fellowship. You guys are still at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. And you can see Brother Trent and Miss Mindy for that. Uh, teens are still meeting on Wednesday night at 7 also. Uh, see Pastor Stephen or Brother Stephen uh, Anderson. And we'd love to have you be a part of those. Uh, but don't miss those opportunities to plug in together uh, through the week as well. All right. Are you excited to be here this morning? Yes, me too. And I am so thankful for the chance to corporately worship a great God. I'd ask the music team uh, to go ahead and come back here. We're going to sing a great hymn, uh, just a tremendous, tremendous encouraging hymn. And it's actually not Holy Spirit. It's What a Friend We Have in Jesus. I think I just messed up on the title slide there. Uh, Go to the first words of that song uh, real quick. That is right. What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And uh, I am grateful, especially this week, uh, to be able to turn to him at any time. And in the most unsettling moments of our life, uh, we know we have a constant there. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, This song has great meaning. It has a whole new meaning to me this week. And uh, I would pray that every one of you would understand the great resource, the great friend, great companion we have in Jesus. So I'd ask you to stand this morning. We'll sing one last song before we open God's word. And I'd ask you just to sing the same way we've been singing intentionally. Let's reflect on our great God.
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the chance to gather together and to worship this morning. We thank you for the chance to do so in freedom. And we ask you for safety. Father, we ask now that as we open your word, you'd speak to our hearts and that your spirit would accomplish in us everything that you would have it to. We thank you for your word and we ask that it would come alive this morning. And Father, I pray as your messenger that you give me words to say and that you would use me in a great way. I am as, um, I'm as empty as I know how to be. And God, I pray that you'd fill me and use me. And Father, that you'd encourage our hearts this morning. If we strip away all of the, all of the other things and all we have is the word of God and the chance to gather and, and read from it, we are a most blessed people. And so, God, I pray that we would show you the gratitude you deserve for giving us your word and allowing us to learn from it. I pray that if there's one in our midst that doesn't know you as their Savior, that today would be the day that they'd realize what a great Savior Jesus is. For those of us that have known you, whether it be days or weeks or months or years, I pray that we would be reminded of the awesome grandeur of Jesus, that we would be drawn to the cross, and there on that cross we would see the love of all eternity displayed uh, to us. And Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for all you've done. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I, uh, I enjoy preaching in series. I enjoy taking a book of the Bible and walking through it. Uh, number one, it helps keep me on track. It lets me know what I'm preaching next because I'm just going verse by verse or chapter by chapter. And so that is a tremendous help. After I get out of a series, what I'll typically do is I'll pray and ask the Lord to give me clarity about what to preach, and uh, each week he is good. Uh, normally, as I'm preaching uh, this Sunday, I already have in my mind or my heart uh, where the Lord would have me go uh, next Sunday. Last week was not like that. I did not have a clear direction on where to go, praying about starting up a new series, just not exactly sure. There's so much transition uh, in our church body and things like this, I just really didn't have any peace. I didn't know what would transpire this week. I got a phone call uh, this week that really, uh, really took the wind out of my sails. I've lost both my grandmothers this year, uh, but the call that I got this week about my brother was one that I had obviously not expected, and really it just blindsided me. Uh, my mother and uh, my stepfather got married when I was 15. And uh, we moved down to Texas. Zach was my youngest step sibling, uh, and Zach was 12 years old. Zach was a little, a little bit on the pudgy side, and he had the reddest cheeks and the biggest smile. I mean, this kid was just somebody that people were drawn to. He was the happiest guy in the world. And I remember when we moved to Texas, there were uh, let's see, eight kids two parents, and a three-bedroom house when we moved down there. And uh, they knew that was not going to last, so they were looking for a new place, but uh, they wanted to get married, and we wanted to get down there. And so uh, we just all really shared a lot of intimate <laughs> moments in that house. Uh, not long after, we got a bigger house. Uh, we moved there, and we were still all sharing bedrooms and sharing life and uh, sharing everything. You shared a lot of things 
uh, in my house. And uh, we also shared a lot of memories, and uh, I have some great memories, I have some difficult memories there, Uh, but when I think about Zach, the way I remember him before I left for college was Zach just loved life. Zach was always smiling, was always joyous. Zach got involved in drugs, and uh, as I went to college, he kind of followed that, and for the last, really, about 15 years... Uh, Zach has been off and on addiction and um, developed some schizophrenia and most recently had been homeless. And uh, it was a very difficult situation. You want to reach out, you try to reach out, uh, but honestly he doesn't know where he's at and what's going on and things like that. So you get that phone call and, uh, and there are so many emotions that flood your mind. Emotions like, I wish, I wish I'd done more. I wish I had said more. I wish I had known and, and handled certain things uh, differently. And uh, Satan is the master of guilt, isn't he? And uh, Satan certainly, uh, certainly brings up so many, uh, so many things. But we as Christians, we're not to operate in guilt. We're to operate in faith. And so as this happens, I'm already thinking to the weekend because I preach to you every single week of my life, I preach to you to steward the life uh, that you're given. We don't get to choose that life, we don't get to choose those moments, we don't get to choose our trials, we don't get to choose uh, adversity, it just kind of comes, right? We understand that we serve a sovereign God, a God who knows all things, a God who does things intentionally and allows things intentionally so that we might steward those things for His glory, so even as I got the news, I'm already thinking to the weekend, I'm thinking this is a powerful opportunity uh, to magnify the name of Jesus and to give hope and give direction and give clarity. But to be honest, I've struggled over the last several days to find that clarity. I sat down and written down notes and torn them up and thrown them away because I have no clear direction. And I've prayed, God, let me preach this passage. I think this would be a good one. No peace whatsoever. All the way up until last night and even this morning. So to be very honest with you, my homiletics professor would look at my notes this morning and they would be ashamed of what it is. I have written on this piece of paper... Four passages of scripture. There are no points. There's no alliterated outline. There's, there's really nothing there other than four passages of scripture. But basically what I've come to is when I was in college, there was a professor that stood up and said, there will be moments in your life when you don't know what to do. There will be moments in your life when you don't know what to say. There will be moments in your life where you can't figure out what to preach. But when you get to those moments, it never fails to just preach Jesus. And so this morning, my message, with no points, no alliterated outline, nothing fancy, is simply Jesus, period. Because when we come to the end of ourselves, and we come into uncertain moments, and moments of difficulty and trial, we can rest in this truth, we always have Jesus, And so this morning, I hope to share with you what God's been doing in my heart over the last couple days. They're simple truths. They're probably truths that you've heard repeated over and over again. You'll not hear something, uh, most likely you'll not hear something today that'll just transform your thinking. But I hope to leave you with this. I hope to leave you with a clear picture of Jesus and how much he loves you and how much he's given to you. Because in moments of darkness and despair, in moments of confusion, with no clarity, we always know this. We can turn to Jesus. As the hymn so eloquently says, turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth, they'll grow strangely dim in the light of what? His glory in his grace. So God, grant us a look at your glory and your grace this morning. If you would take your Bibles this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, if you're glad to be here this morning, say amen. I'll say this, there's no place in the world I'd rather be than right here in this moment with you. And uh, man, I'm so grateful uh, to be your pastor. And I'm so grateful that you're my friends. And I'm so grateful for our God. 
Look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, and we'll begin reading there in verse number 1. We'll read down through verse number 8, and uh, I want you to read as we read along. We'll read, like I said, we've, we'll read four passages of Scripture. As we do so, please don't tune them out. Uh, please, please follow along and, and apply to our hearts the truths that we'll read. Let God's Word penetrate into the deepest parts of us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 1 says this, Moreover, brethren... I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. And then he goes on, and and keep in mind, the next three passages we'll read, just uh, just so we're in the same place here, uh, the next three passages we'll read, they're all to specific bodies of believers, specific churches, uh, specific gatherings, right? So this is to the Corinthian believers. We'll look at the Ephesian believers as well as believers at Philippi, okay? So Paul is saying, listen, I want you to understand that I'm going to essentially recap the gospel that I've already delivered into you, the gospel that you've believed in, the gospel that you were saved by, right? He says, I want to remind you of what the gospel is. Are you with me this morning? And I find in each of his letters, he kind of does a similar thing. He says, hey, hey, guys, let's recap the gospel. I'm writing to you as believers, but I want you to understand uh, this is the gospel that we have trusted in, that we hold dear, that we communicate to others. This is the the gospel. So verse number uh, three here. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for the person that delivered the gospel uh, to me, aren't you? I'm thankful that faithful men and women in Sunday school and in church delivered the gospel. Can you say amen right there? I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that what Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. He said it's confirmed in verse 5 that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Then he goes on in verse number 9 through verse number 11 there to basically talk about uh, the great grace that he had received and how unworthy of that grace he was and how thankful he was uh, to have received that grace. I want you to take your attention to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number two. Ephesians chapter number two is is truly a jewel of scripture. It is just an incredibly, uh, uh, incredibly simple yet incredibly profound uh, passage of scripture. If you look there in verse number uh, uh, four, even, or I'm sorry, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us. That word quickened uh, it would be to make alive. He's made us alive. Continue on there. What in Christ? He's quickened us together with Christ. And he says, There by grace ye are saved. It raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Look at verse number uh, 8 there. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Verse number 9, not of works, lest any man should vo- boast. Verse number 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He says to these Ephesian believers, and we covered this in our series, he says, listen, uh, you're not here on your own. You've been given grace and you were saved uh, by that grace through faith. It's not of your works, right? Uh, can we say amen to that? I want you to take your attention now to Philippians, Philippians chapter number 2, Philippians chapter number 2 this morning. Philippians 2 is uh, yet another great passage of scripture because it describes Jesus and his character, his humanity in such vivid detail. Verse number 5 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, 
took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father." We're going to have some audience participation here. Let's walk through these passages together. What are some themes that are common to all three of these passages? Grace, the very grace of God. What is grace? Grace is unmerited favor. What grace is, is that I do not deserve God's love, and yet He shows it to me uh, me anyway, right? What are some other themes that we see? I'm sorry? The humility of Christ and becoming obedient to death giving himself, being buried, uh, uh, dying, being buried, and risen again. What are some other themes you see? Love, forgiveness, yes. We see God having a plan for his creation after salvation. We see in that passage in Philippians 2 that he's uh, before ordained us unto good works uh, that we should walk in them, right? So we see uh, God has purpose to our life. And the last passage we'll read here in a few moments just deals exactly with that, how we ought to live as Christians after the fact. But let's think about this. Let's think about the universe itself. We understand that God created all that there is. Will we agree with that? Most definitely. How did he do so? He created it by... By forming it with his hands and speaking it into existence with his mouth, right? What great power that is. What immense, immense power that that is. He made man. Man sins against God. Man is damned because of his sin. Uh, God had given man choice. Man exercised choice. He chose to sin because of that. Every man is a sinner, right? But God loved us. And he orchestrated a tremendously beautiful plan of redemption foretold in the Old Testament, fulfilled in the New Testament, where God would be robed in flesh and give himself for the world. Let me just tell you how incredible the gospel of Christ is. Last week, uh, Zach, has a, Zach has a friend, Rob. Rob, where are you at? Raise your hand right there, Rob. Rob is Zach's buddy. And Rob, Rob and Zach have been buddies for a long time. Yeah, And uh, four years ago, if you remember Zach's story, about four years ago, five years ago, Zach got saved. right? And uh, when Zach got saved, he began talking to me about some of his friends that he had a heart for. One of his friends was Rob. right? And we've had conversations about Rob. And, and Zach's been praying for Rob. And Rob, over the last few years, has done a little bit of a lot of things. And he's just kind of... He's, I think the accurate way to describe it would be you're searching, right? You're trying to find where you belong and, and where all of this, uh, where everything falls in. And so over the last several years, Zach's been praying for Rob, and Rob has come to a place where he knows that he needs God in his life. So uh, Rob's come to church, and Rob, actually, the last week before we stopped having services in person uh, for the coronavirus, that last week, I think, was Rob's first week in our church. And uh, it was a blessing. And then last week, Rob is here, the first uh, service after uh, we're back meeting together. That's a good track record, by the way, Rob. You're doing good. Uh, three in a row right there, buddy. I like it. But uh, Rob came up to me after the service. Everybody kind of, uh, most people had kind of left. And Rob said, hey, can, can I talk to you? And we talked. And, and what did we talk about? We talked about this, the gospel, right? We talked about the gospel in great detail, the love of God and how the love of God uh, just was uh, fulfilled through Jesus Christ and, and the grace that he showed and, and the mercy that he showed and the love that he showed and then the faith that we're allowed to have to believe that for ourselves. and we get all the way down to that point of making a decision and Rob said, well, Jonathan, I, I, to be really honest, two weeks ago, uh, I was going through life, and I came to this point, and to be really honest with you, uh, two weeks ago, this is what I did. I placed my faith in Jesus. And so Rob, right now, is our brother in Christ. Can we celebrate that? <clears throat> and man, man, we're excited about that. We're thrilled. Uh, a year ago, last Sunday, Zach finished discipleship, and now he's going to be able to begin discipleship with Rob, and how cool is that? What are you saying all of that for? Here, here's the cool thing. Number one, we want to celebrate new life in Christ, amen? Uh, but secondly, that's the gospel at work. That is the gospel at work. You see, the truth that changed our lives 
ought be the truth that changes other people's lives. The reason I kind of came to this point, number one, not having any clue what to preach. You can't mess up preaching Jesus. But then here's the other thought. If for this were the last time I were to ever stand before you, this is the message I'd want to give you. Jesus. Jesus. You say, well, that's kind of ambiguous. It's kind of vague. It's kind of general. No, understand this. Jesus is the answer for everything. Every problem in the world. If you've been watching the news this week, our world is literally going up in flames. And I, and I would encourage you before you jump to uh, condemning behaviors and things like this and, and, and being sa- and listen, I'm saddened by what I see. It hurts my heart to see what we're seeing on multiple, multiple levels. But understand the cure that the world needs, the cure that the world needs is nothing except Jesus. And when Jesus, listen to me, when Jesus changes a person's life, that's exactly the change that we're looking for in the world. So with that thought in mind, I want to take you to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 this morning, and this is where we're going to end up. I hope to leave you with, with the thought that Jesus is a great, great, great God. But I also want to leave you with this thought. When we encounter Jesus and Jesus saves us, Jesus ought to change our lives. So I, t- I kind of summarized 15 years of Zach's story in just a sentence. But sprinkled along that 15 years, Zach would get sober for a little while. And Zach would really, really, really pursue Jesus. I I heard his testimony. I believe with all my heart he was actually saved. I believe that he's with Jesus now. And I am tremendously grateful for that. I find peace in that. But amidst his moments of, of addiction and schizophrenia, Zach would have these moments where he wanted to know Jesus. You go to talk to talk to him every time that I'd see him or talk to him. All he wanted to talk about with me was, was Jesus. He wanted to talk about uh, who Jesus was and how Jesus was working in his heart and how Jesus wanted to change his life. And it was just such a joy to talk to him uh, about Jesus. And he had this desire in him, as each of us who have placed faith in Christ, he had this desire to know Jesus and to know him more. Romans chapter 12 is the result of Paul knowing who Jesus was and how it had changed Paul. And so then he's writing to these Romans and he he says here in verse number one, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, say the next two words with me, uh, what, living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed and by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let him prophesy according to the uh, proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do so, uh, or do it with simplicity, he that uh, ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy, Mercy with cheerfulness. So pause a moment uh, before we finish the passage. He's saying, hey, listen, uh, uh, Christian, you're to present yourself a living sacrifice unto God. And the whole idea of sacrifice and living, it, it doesn't make sense because the sacrifice is it's supposed to die. But he says, listen, God's desire for you is not that you uh, necessarily die for him, but that you live for him, that you be living while dying, Okay. A living sacrifice, dying to self, dying to sin, a living for him, right? 
And then he goes into the crux of this passage, and really it's the theme of, of, of this passage, and it's the motivator uh, for Christian behavior. It's the motivator for uh, Christian maturity, and that is this, it's love. And so he says in verse number 9, let love be without dissimulation. Uh, that idea of letting love be without dissimulation, it's this, let love be sincere. Let it be honest. Let, let it be what it is, right? Let it be without dissimulation. Continue uh, reading there in verse number 9, abhor or hate that which is evil. Cleave or cling or hold fast to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit serving the Lord, uh, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Listen, here's what he's saying, and, and we're going to continue here, but he's saying love is your motivation for all of this, but this is how a Christian ought to act. Th this is how Jesus changes a life, and this is how you reflect him. Look at verse number 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Celebrate success. Weep with them that weep. Mourn with those that mourn. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estates. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Seek peace, not conflict. Verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, you ready? Listen to me. Feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So let's parse this passage out. Let's think about it. Number one, we're writing to who? Who is Paul writing to in this passage? He's writing to what? Believers. He's writing to Christians. And as he began speaking about their behavior, he says, hey, you're to be a living sacrifice. But then when he, when he parses down how you're actually to live, when he gives us a lot of, by the way, there's a whole lot there as far as instructions on how to, we're, we're to behave ourselves. There's a lot of truth there. There's a lot of things that step on our natural man's toes, right? There's a lot of things that don't sit well in our flesh in that passage. But he began speaking, and he's speaking about, number one, our behavior to one another as Christians. So there's a certain behavior that God expects of his people, uh, believers, one to another, right? There's a certain way we're to conduct ourselves one toward another that would honor him. But then secondly, he gives us our behavior toward our, what, our enemies. Our enemies. And can I just say that not only are there great enemies to the gospel, and we see that, it feels like increasingly more so there are enemies to the gospel. But listen, there are enemies in our life. There are enemies that people that we struggle with, people that literally would show hatred toward us, right? So how then are we supposed to act as a Christian, as a living sacrifice, uh, toward those that are our enemies? We're to bless them. We're to pray for them. We're to, you ready, forgive them. Why? Because in doing so, we are reflecting what? We're reflecting Jesus. Here's the truth of the matter. We all struggle. We all have battles. We all, we all, we all, we all have work to do. But here's what we ought to be working toward. You ready? And let's just make this very simple. Here's what we ought to be working toward. We ought to be working toward imitating Christ. That's why I said in Philippians 2, let this mind be in you. Hey, carry the mind of Christ with you. 
It ought be said of us that when people look at us and they see us, that they see him. It ought be said of us that as they see our conduct and the way we behave ourselves, that they see not Jonathan, they see uh, and not Fletcher, not, not, not Clayton, they see what? They see Jesus in us. And so here's my question for you today. Can others see Jesus in you? And not just momentary glimpses. Not just a little tease here and there. But do you emulate Christ-like behavior consistently? You say, well, Jonathan, I fail sometimes. We all do. I should have phrased it this way. Do you strive to model Christ's like behavior consistently. If we have one message to preach, it's this Jesus loves us. Jesus died for us. Jesus gives us opportunity at an eternal life through faith in Jesus. And then when Jesus saves us, he saves us, listen to me, he saves us for a reason and a purpose. And that purpose is to glorify Jesus. It, here's what I hope. I hope when I'm long dead and gone, when people don't remember my name, they remember the love of Christ displayed through my life. I, I'm driving here today and coming to a close here. Uh, Stephen, if you'd come to the piano here, or Joanna, either one. Rock, paper, scissors, real quick here. Joanna, can you come to the piano? <clears throat> I was driving here this morning, and beside me, uh, there was a, a RV. And this RV absolutely stood out. It, had, it looked like somebody had taken paint, and that they had taken a paintbrush, and that they had just went, right? With every color of the rainbow. Like, every, I mean, this camper was an artistic work. I will not say masterpiece, because it was something else. And on this RV, there was, a, there was like a little sticker or sign that said Betty. So this RV had a personality. This was Betty, the RV. I didn't get a glimpse at the driver of Betty, the RV, but I could not miss <laughs> Betty, the RV. We're sitting there at a stoplight uh, right at, by Largo Mall on my way here. And I'm looking at this piece of art that was Betty. And I look at the front driver's side panel. And somebody had painted that panel. And on that panel, they had written something. And, and of course, if you're seeing the piece of art that is Betty, you want to know what's written there, right? So if you come back next week, I'll tell you what was written on Betty. <laughs> just teasing it said this if you forget you saw Betty remember Jesus and when I'm reading that I'm thinking what in the world is going on here but I'm driving here and the only message I have is, is Jesus it's all, it's all I have when you strip away everything I am, the only constant that I can cling to, it's that, it's, it's Jesus. When my mind fails, and I don't have the ability to remember things I once re remembered, let me remember Jesus. There's a, there's a man who was our uh, youth pastor when we were teenagers. He was Zach's youth pastor. His wife has early onset dementia. She's in her 50s. And she does not remember her kids or her husband part of the time. She forgets her own name. She's in her 50s. But Kevin, Kevin's his name. Kevin will sing about Jesus. And something incredible happens. She knows exactly who Jesus is. And so as he sings, you'll see her just start praising him. 
And half the time she doesn't have words to praise him because she, she can't grasp them. She doesn't remember them. She doesn't even remember who he is sometimes. She doesn't remember who herself is sometimes. But she'll never forget the love of Jesus. And I hope if you forget everything else that that's what you remember. But I also, I also pray this. I pray that when people see me, the last thing they see So I don't want to play to your emotions. I'm not trying to manipulate this morning, but I'm trying to give you a bit of a shot in the arm. Hey, we've got one life. C.T. Studd said, one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. You, you see, this is just a shadow. It's a borrowed temple. This is just a little moment. It's a vapor, the Bible says. It's a, here for a little bit of time that vanishes away. But all of eternity, if we're children of God, all of eternity, we'll spend time with Jesus. So we might as well start liking him here. And when we might as well start praising Him here and we might as well start serving Him here and we might as well reflect Him here because for all of eternity, we will spend eternity praising the name of the Lord our God. So if there's but one word I can echo for the rest of my life, may it be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus until I die. And listen, I pray that your heart is Move to action because of the great love of God here in His love that He first loved us. Listen, greater love had no man than a man lay down his life for his friends. Don't ever forget that even though you weren't there in that moment and you did not see with your eyes, understand that He knew you and He died for you because He loved you. And it might just be that the first verse you ever learned was John 3.16, but let it be the last verse you ever forget. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, the love of Jesus. So when trials come, look to Jesus. And when life falls apart, look to Jesus. And when you need strength, look to Jesus. And when you need support, look to Jesus. And when you don't know where to look or what to look for, just look for Jesus. He is the answer to the cure. He is the fix for the world's problems. Everything in our world that's evil stems from a lack of... Father, I pray that we would emulate your son, that we would display his love toward the world around us, that each and every one of us at every moment of our lives would seek to bring praise to him, that we'd understand that this is just a vapor. It's a borrowed sanctuary. It's a borrowed a temple. We have but one life. It's, it's not going to last forever. Uh, uh, but, but our chance, our opportunity here is to steward what you've given us for your glory. Might we live in this moment for eternity. And might we sing the praises of Jesus. We thank you and praise you. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around, I'm going to ask you two simple questions. First of all this, if you're here this morning, maybe you've heard the truth of the love of God your whole life, but there's never been a time where you've placed your faith in Him. Nobody looking around, if you'd say, Jonathan, I don't know where I stand with Jesus. I have not placed my faith in him. I'm concerned about that. With nobody looking around, if you'd say, Jonathan, would you pray for me this morning? Would you slip your hand up where you are? No one looking around. If you'd say, Jonathan, I am a child of God. I know that my eternity is purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ. If I were to die today, I'd spend all of eternity with him. I am his child and he is my father. If you'd testify to that, raise your hand this morning. All across the room, amen. And so here's your challenge. Would you live like his child? Would you model him to the world around you? The musicians are going to play here for just a moment. We're going to take just a couple of moments. And I'd ask that you spend some time with the Lord, reflecting on what you've heard today and asking him to strengthen you for the days ahead. As the music plays, you listen, you pray. 
take some time with your Savior. again one more time if you can play that Joanna go back to the lyrics of that course there there's a lot of people that as they come to church what they're looking for they're looking for an experience they they want a moment they want an emotional high it's the same desire that people that shoot up drugs or drink alcohol or try to try to fill their life with vices it's the same thing they're looking for people that gamble or people that seek thrill it's what they're looking for they're looking for an emotion a moment they're looking for something to just help them forget about where they're at but here's the truth of the of the gospel and here's the truth of the holy spirit we are not seeking a moment where we lose touch with reality. We're not seeking a, a euphorial thinking, a euphorial thinking. We're not trying to seek a moment or 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 just this this just magical. Th- We're seeking to be so filled with the presence of God that He controls our being. 
that he moves in our life in the midst of every moment that when we speak it's his words when we act it's it's the way he would act why because we're overcome by his presence it's not a moment it's not an experience it's not angels coming down and patting you on the back while you're singing it's not somebody tickling you while you're listen it is the presence of the lord that we can practice every moment of life if we'll submit to his spirit so our goal when we come to church and when we hear truth preached is not just to is stick it in the collection and say, oh, that's cool, some more to know about Jesus. No, might it change who we are? Might it always move us to action? Might the Holy Spirit mandate that we move to action for God? And so as we sing that song, stand with me. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Flood this place and fill the atmosphere. God, speak to my heart. Do in my heart what you want to do. Accomplish in my heart what you want. And may I be overcome with your presence. How? Through obedience to your spirit. Don't chase a feeling. Chase a being. Chase God. Spirit, you are welcome here. us and guide us for your glory. God, I pray that we be obedient to your spirit and that you'd work in and through us. We pray that in our lives we would seek you first and foremost, that we would pursue you passionately, that we'd seek to glorify you through every minute of our lives. We understand that these are on loan. We understand that our, our lives can be revoked at any time, but Father, I pray that we'd spend our lives for you. God, I pray that we not waste a moment, that we be energized and encouraged, edified to, to work and walk after you. We praise you. We love you. We thank you for a glimpse of Jesus this morning. We ask all these things in his name. Church, say amen. amen. Well, I love you. It's been a good day, and uh, I'm excited for the next moment that we can meet again. Uh, respect each other as we're dismissing here, and I encourage you, fellowship, uh, be, be respectful toward one another, and uh, we're very thankful for you. On the way out, uh, there is an offering box, and you're able to drop your offering or, or your tithes in there, and I want to encourage you to be faithful there in your giving. I am thankful for you. I love you. I hope that you have a good week. Uh, before you leave, tell somebody that you love them. God bless you. You're dismissed.